Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, September 27, 2019. The Unnecessary Cryptocurrency Controversy. First, what is money? The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines money as something generally accepted as a medium of exchange, a measure of value, or a means of payment. Through the centuries, people have used everything from large stones to metals as money. Investopedia defines cryptocurrency like this. A cryptocurrency is a digital or virtual currency that uses cryptography for security. A cryptocurrency is difficult to counterfeit because of this security feature. Many cryptocurrencies are decentralized systems based on blockchain technology, a distributed ledger enforced by a disparate network of computers. A defining feature of a cryptocurrency, and arguably its biggest allure, is its organic nature. It is not issued by any central authority, rendering it theoretically immune to government interference or manipulation. Now, most of us have heard about Bitcoin, and now Facebook has announced it's going to be introducing Libra, its cryptocurrency. There are many other cryptocurrencies, and the only limitation on their growth is whether or not people will accept them as payment for goods and services in the same manner as U.S. banknotes or other government-issued currency. There are many reasons why cryptocurrencies have expanded so rapidly. Many of these involve the wishes of the users of these currencies to escape the attention of government. Sahil Alyasi Asar is an international tax counsel who wrote a two-part article for the Daily Tax Report. In it, she discusses the attempt by the IRS to require people to report income from cryptocurrency transactions. She points out that by the end of August 2019, the IRS will have sent out more than 10,000 letters to taxpayers that it suspects may have unreported income during tax years 2013 through 2017 relating to transactions using cryptocurrencies. Taxpayers are warned to actively report their holdings, correct any previous erroneous reportings, and calculate the tax. A taxpayer who receives virtual currency as a payment for goods and services must include in its gross income the fair market value of the virtual currency measured in U.S. dollars as of the date the virtual currency was received. The basis of virtual currency a taxpayer receives as payment for goods and services is the fair market value of the virtual currency in U.S. dollars as of the date of the receipt. Transactions using virtual currency must be reported in U.S. dollars as of the date of payment or receipt. The article gets into many other complicated tax issues, which just points out the sheer idiocy of the present Internal Revenue Code in trying to bend it to tax every facet of the acquisition and use of cryptocurrency. So let's look at why the fair tax eliminates the hysteria about cryptocurrency taxation. Obviously, There are other reasons why the swamp, many members of Congress, and the rest of the ruling class are concerned about cryptocurrency. They fear that cryptocurrency will make people less controllable. Now, they can manipulate the government-issued currency and, by doing so, exercise power over us. If the real objective of all the hysteria about cryptocurrency is to ensure that people pay taxes on their profits, Isn't it easier not to pass all these new rules and regulations and require the IRS to make further incursions on our personal freedoms? There is an easy answer, the fair tax. Under the fair tax, the government, for revenue collection purposes, doesn't care if somebody owns cryptocurrency. The only consideration is that the fair tax is paid when the holders of cryptocurrency use it to purchase goods and retail services. Since less than 8% of the country's vendors account for over 90% of the retail purchases, collecting the fair tax will be simple. As discussed in earlier articles, the fair tax will be much easier to collect than the income tax. Consumers will pay it anonymously at the cash register when they purchase new goods and services at retail. Of course, 
One of the main attributes of the fair tax is that it collects more money with dramatically less intrusions by government into our personal affairs. Now, isn't that just what the users of cryptocurrency are seeking? In conclusion, contronyms are words that have opposite or nearly opposite meanings. Contronyms are also called Janus words. Janus was the Roman god of doorways, beginnings, and time, and is usually portrayed as having two faces, one looking toward the future and one looking back at the past. All of these protests from the ruling class about how destructive and disruptive cryptocurrency can be are really forms of contronyms. They claim that their concern is for our welfare, but their real concern is protecting their position of having control over us. In many respects, the ruling class represents the face of Janus that is looking to the past. Supporters of the fair tax represent the face of Janus looking to the future. If our country is going to prosper and our people remain citizens and not subjects, then the fair tax must become the law of the land, committing the income payroll tax system to the sewer in which it belongs. It's time for Congress to have serious discussions about replacing the failing income payroll tax system with the fair tax, the only truly fair tax. <laughs> This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org. 